Greetings. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the 2021 Virtual Unimed Innovation Awards. We're pleased that you're able to join us today as we honor the scientists and innovators here at UNMC and UNO. There should be a PDF of the award ceremony program in the chat. Please feel free to open it as we do have additional information about the awards as well as our current and past honored inventors. In addition, if you'd like to stick around after the awards and chat with the Unimed team or any of the innovators, we'll have some open breakout rooms for you to mingle, ask questions, or just offer congratulations to our honored guests. I hope you've all had a chance to participate in our other innovation week activities. We've had a startup resources panel, a prototype panel, and a group of entrepreneurs talking and had some outstanding conversations and discussions. Those panels should be available online uh, after this week so you can catch them if you've missed them. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Michael Dixon, President and CEO of Unimed. We are the technology research and commercialization arm for UNMC and UNO. Our mission is to help foster innovation, advance research, and engage entrepreneurs in industry to commercialize novel technologies. While we hope the postponement of the Innovation Awards would allow for an in-person ceremony, we didn't want to delay the 21 awards any longer. Even with the challenges of the pandemic, technology commercialization has been strong. As we take a moment to celebrate these victories and gaze into the future, please know the Unimed staff will continue to find new ways to engage and make sure our innovations have the potential to become products in the market. One advantage to hosting the awards virtually, again, is that we'll have a copy of it. So if you'd like to share with a, a family member or someone who couldn't be here today, uh, please check us out on our YouTube channel. Um, I've been told we're supposed to have you subscribe and like. So I appreciate everyone taking the time today and uh, helping us honor the innovators. Without that constant supply of new ideas, basic research and inventions, there are no patents, no licenses, no, no uh, revenue. We're extremely thankful for all the partnerships and collaborations that are required to make this translational work happen. I want to extend a big thank you to everyone who's honored here today. So at this time, it's my pleasure to introduce UNMC's Chancellor, the Executive Vice President and Provost of the Nebraska System and the Chair of the Nebraska Medicine Board, Dr. Jeffrey Gold, to provide opening remarks for today's awards. Dr. Gold is a tireless advocate and champion for the development of commercialization of university discoveries. Thank you, Michael. I am honored to have this opportunity today. As you know, I strongly believe that the groundbreaking research and innovative clinical care that we honor here today is truly a critical part of our mission here at the University of Nebraska. Many of you have probably heard me say that research and innovation is never complete until it's touched a human life. It bears repeating because we have at our disposal the talent and the intellect and the creativity right here for ingenious solutions to some of the world's most serious problems. Many of you are already on that path with the help and support of our technology transfer professionals led by Michael and his team here at Unimed. For example, I know that Unimed has helped secure 26 US patents in 2021, breaking UNIMED's oldest record that goes back more than two decades. I also know that Michael will tell you that the patents are but one tool for moving your innovations and discoveries into the real world where they can do some real good and touch human lives. More than 60% of UNIMED's patent portfolio is now licensed to companies for commercial development. This is remarkable because it means we have external commercial partners investing their money, their time, their talent, and their treasure to develop our ideas into new and innovative products. And that's where things get interesting because that further development and collaboration is a very big part of the difference between a scientifically interesting and important journal article and a new treatment or a cure that helps to improve people's health. 
But we can do more than help make people more healthy. We can give them better lives. We can improve our communities, our state, and our region. A great example of this can be seen in the record number of new startup companies that have been built around academic innovations. UNMC startups are not only creating solutions to chronic conditions or building better devices, but they're also adding value. They're adding wealth and opportunity to our local community. Companies like Vireo in Plattsmouth and Virtual Incision in Lincoln are raising tens of millions of dollars, employing hundreds of individuals, building facilities, and growing at an unbelievable rate. I see more than that in our future and can't help but think how lucky we should all feel about your collective hard work, dedication, and the projects you have worked on. And so, congratulations again to all of our awardees. I very much look forward to seeing what additional heights that we can reach in the next year and in the years to come. Back to you, Michael, and thanks for this opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Gold, for that great welcome. We appreciate all the support you've given us and the innovators across the system. Over the past decade, research growth and innovation on the UNMC campus has increased significantly. We've been incredibly fortunate to have great leaders that not only support research, but actively roll up their sleeves and work with us to advocate for that growth. To help open today's ceremony, we've asked Dr. Jennifer Larson, UNMC's Vice Chancellor for Research, to help us reflect on this growth and what it might mean for our future. Thank you, Michael. I would love to add my welcome to this year's Innovation Awards Ceremony. Whether virtual or in person, it's always been my great pleasure to celebrate our inventors as innovation and research go hand in hand. Some of you may know that I have been Vice Chancellor of Research for 10 years, so I was asked to reflect a little bit on the journey Unimed and technology transfer has been on at UNMC over the last decade, and then to envision a little bit of where I believe we are going. So in thinking back, 10 years ago, we had a very small number, but very active inventors, but they often did their work alone. Now, many of our inventors work in teams, which often speeds up the development of new innovations. 10 years ago, we had a few scientists working in drug discovery and development, but that number has since quadrupled. 10 years ago, few individuals were developing devices or software tools, but this category has become one of the most common categories of new invention notices today. 10 years ago, in 2011, having one new startup was considered a good year. But now, 2000, uh, last two years, we've had five to seven startups uh, each of those years. 10 years ago, our researchers weren't commonly reaching out to commercial entities to develop their research ideas. But just over the last five years, investigator-initiated grants with industry, excluding any clinical trials, increased by 47%, nearly $10 million in 2021, about 60 to 70 projects per year. 10 years ago, we did not tag the distinguished scientists for whether they had collaborated on innovation, but this year we did. I suspect it would be a lot lower uh, than what we saw this year where seven of the 12, 60% had been involved with either a new invention notice, a patent, a licensed technology, or a startup. Further, most of our large grant programs also emphasize new invention development, uh, and that was not the case in the past. So the question is why? Well, certainly we have seen that growth partly because we have more faculty and there's more research funding in general on campus, but I think also our culture itself has changed. Innovation has become more commonplace and expected as part of our research community. Inventors are helping other inventors, and are collaborating with other institutions, other University of Nebraska institutions included. And the Unimed team doesn't have to work so hard just to define what a new invention notice is. So if I were to project where we we're going, I would say that even though the new headquarters for Unimed and Unitech are just getting built today, it will very soon be filled to overflowing not only with UNMC, but other startups and industries who want to collaborate with our inventors. I'd say we are headed on the right track. So congratulations in advance to all the awardees uh, that are going to be given later today. And back to you, Michael. 
Thank you, Jennifer. Um, I very much appreciate your leadership and guidance as we've uh, built our programs over the last decade and, and look forward to the, the decades in it, uh, that we're coming into. So at this point in the program, I'd like to provide a bit of information about Unimed and encourage anyone who thinks they may have an idea or discovery to contact us and to see how we can work together to make that available for the public. If you look at our website, unimed.com, there are many ways to contact us. If there's ever a question or if you need some information, please don't hesitate. We're really here to be your partner and to make sure that UNC and UNO continues to be a destination for researchers that want to make the world a better place. So if you've heard my talk before or seen our annual report, you notice that we track several metrics related to research innovation and commercialization. These metrics really start at research funding and go through partnering or licensing. Last year was another record year for research expenditures at UNMC and UNO. This is really critical as the level of research funding is directly related to the number of inventions. With more funding from diverse sources comes more opportunities for innovation and collaboration with industrial partners. At this time, I'd like to congratulate everyone involved in the research enterprise, the faculty, administrators, sponsor programs, our leaders, Dr. Larson, Dr. Bales, Dr. Cradiville, all the deans, directors, and chairs that have worked tirelessly to help grow research at the university. Without this funding, none of this would be possible. Now, looking at the long path from discovery to product, it all really starts with an idea a discovery or invention. It's typically part of a research program, but not all new inventions are derived from federal funding. Some just come from students or staff who find solutions to very real world problems. Last year, we worked with faculty, students, and staff that created 105 new inventions. That's 105 new opportunities to better diagnose, manage, or treat diseases. Also, I'm pleased to report that of the 170 inventors that were on new inventions last year, 90 of them were new, are new to the process. We're hopeful that, that outreach efforts will continue and we'll be able to find more pockets of innovation across our Omaha campuses. As experienced inventors uh, on this uh, in awards today, we're really asking that you help um, spread the message and make sure that people that aren't aware of Unimed um, can find us. To help boost engagement, uh, this past fall, Unimed held our first napkin contest. Um, we had a great response and the team has been really excited to work with the uh, applicants. We will be announcing winners of the contest next week, so please stay tuned for that. So to help make sure that all these ideas and resources are well protected, Unimed facilitates the transfers of materials and information through material transfer confidential disclosure agreements. These agreements are really a marker for industrial collaborations or strong academic collaborations. We continue to strive to have them turned around as quickly as possible, often in a matter of days, or sometimes if the right partner is there in a matter of hours. We strongly encourage collaboration, but we wanna make sure that our researchers and university are protected when we collaborate. One of UMED's strengths is that we have two, patent, two experienced patent attorneys with Jeff Anderson and Jason Nicola leading this effort. Both have private law firm experience and are very well experienced in these type of agreements. I think it's a great reflection of a well-run institution, the fact that we get these agreements done so quickly and so strongly. So thank you to Jeff and Jason for helping to keep our research enterprise moving quickly. As we move into the commercialization phase, one of our key metrics is patent applications, which are a marker for a good idea that has both novelty and potential market. These are assets that companies and venture capitalists will invest their time and money into. Last year, we filed 159 patent applications, which is a company record. In addition, we had 58 patents issued, 26 in the US and 30 foreign. The 26 issued patents is again, another record showing the strength of our research enterprise and the novelty. Furthermore, the 102 new patent applications is a significant 36% increase from the previous year. So two of the key experts in our patent procurement process are Jason Nicola and Mindy Ware. We're incredibly pleased to have such talented and experienced team securing, securing this critical IP for our university and investigators. While patents are an important marker for innovation, a patent by itself doesn't help patients or improve healthcare. Unimed and the inventor's mission here is really to have a positive impact 
And that requires us to find commercial entities to help develop those patented inventions into products that can be made available to the public. As we market IP to prospective licensees, we track the success of our marketing efforts as opportunities. An opportunity is really created when our marketing efforts uh, draw the interest of someone. They say, hey, I'm interested to learn more. I'd like to discuss how I can help develop your new idea. Last year, our marketing efforts created 175 new opportunities, setting another record. These industrial connections are critical as they are the next step to, towards the ultimate goal of licensing the IP. The licensing team is led by Dr. Matt Bain, Dr. Tyler Scher, Dr. AJ Crawford, and Dr. Lisa Jorgensen round out the team that works with faculty, students, and staff to develop these inventions and technologies so that industrial partners can make them available. Moving on to our, our next and probably most important metric, licenses. While inventions and marketing are important, it's critical for us to find industrial partners that are willing to commit the resources required to develop this technology into products. Last year was a solid year. We executed 19 licenses, which is an increase from the previous year. The five-year ruling trend for licensing is also exciting as the number of licensing deals and potential opportunities for products that help people has increased significantly from what we saw 10 to 20 years ago. One area where we've seen significant growth over the past three years is in startup activity. In the past, UNMC's averaged around two to three startups a year, but last year we helped develop seven new startups, which is another company record. And this year we anticipate working with entrepreneurs to create another five to seven more. We believe there's a strong opportunity to continue to build and grow more startup companies based on our technologies. Now to help us build in this momentum, we are very fortunate to have a strong team building Unitech, our incubator accelerator. Unitech is more than just a downstream partner though. They're really a vital resource to our university and local entrepreneurial ecosystem. Unitech will help our nascent startup companies get started and grow into the next generation of biotech and pharma companies. They've already attracted the eye of the EDA and Kaufman Institute and continue to bring in funds that support entrepreneurs and startup companies. Furthermore, in the coming year, I'm optimistic that we'll see the first new buildings begin to be developed on the Saddle Creek campus. The planned innovation hub will have around 160,000 square feet of space for startup companies, co-working, and hopefully some wet labs. In addition, it will have a coffee shop and a brewery to help make sure the space is activated both morning and night. The development partners of Covell and Greenslate have experience in this space and a fantastic plan to make, the, to make this the biomedical epicenter of the Midwest. While it often takes longer than anticipated, we have several startup companies raising money and developing products. On the funding side, in just the past four months, we've seen virtual incision raise $46 million in a single round, bringing the total amount they've raised to close to 100 million. Another startup, Respire AI, just announced a million dollar funding round a few weeks ago from a venture fund in Israel. We also have startup companies like Vireo that have built production plants in Nebraska. They now employ 40 to 50 Nebraskans. In addition, they are growing and have a goal to add another 30 employees this year. This activity has attracted brand new venture fans like Innisphere Ventures and Advantage Capital to Nebraska. I really see a bright future for biotech startups as we continue to work to make Omaha and Nebraska a destination for biotech venture investment. Unimed has several different ways that we create revenue. Royalty is a diff difficult metric as almost all of the technologies we're licensing require FDA approval before they can be sold which means that royalty revenue isn't generated until five to 10 years after a license is signed. And it typically requires successful navigation of the product development gauntlet. Fortunately, Unimed works to create revenue for the university in other ways. Last year, we helped generate close to 1.5 million in sponsored research. This research was important as it was specifically directed to developing our intellectual property. It was really critical funding to help pull that IP through the valley of death and into the clinic or market where it can have a positive impact on healthcare. Of the tens of thousands of licenses executed by universities each year, only a few, less than 10, make blockbuster status and generate more than a billion dollars of sales. However, when that rare event occurs, rewards can be substantial. A small percentage of a $5 billion drug has the potential to fundamentally change our campus and put us on a new trajectory. That's one of the reasons we continue to develop as many innovations as possible. 
Ultimately, it's difficult to know if a technology is going to be a blockbuster when it's created. We need to take as many shots as possible, as more opportunities mean more potential for that home run. We truly believe the more can be accomplished working together than alone. Great ideas often come at the intersection of disciplines and collaboration for the creation of ideas is critical. Unimed is another example of a collaborator that many faculty or students may not consider because we collaborate at a different or later stage. However, we're here to collaborate with inventors and help make sure these new ideas and technology progress from the bench to the clinic to the market. Now is the time of the awards that everyone's been waiting for. To do the honors, I'd like to pass the host duties over to my colleague, Dr. Matt Bame. Dr. Bame is Unimed's Vice President and Director of Licensing, which means he oversees many of the day-to-day -day operations of Unimed, including the receipt, evaluation, marketing, and licensing of new inventions. Dr. Bame. Thanks, Michael. Uh, it's, I'd like to thank everyone for attending today's award ceremony. It's my honor to present the awards again this year. Today, we will recognize those individuals that submitted new invention disclosures to our office, those who had patent applications result in issued US patents, and those who had a technology license in fiscal year 2021. Again, our awards, we'd like to recognize all those individuals that were inventors on new invention notifications submitted in fiscal year uh, 2021. Since we are virtual again this year, uh, we unfortunately can't have all of our inventors stand and be recognized, but we do want to display your names and we want to recognize how important your contributions are. Inventors who submitted more than uh, one invention this year have an asterisk behind their name and all inventors will receive a commemorative pin as a token of our appreciation for your efforts. In uh, fiscal year 2021, we had 105 new inventions submitted to Unimed, which included a total of 170 inventors. Unimed's goal is to help see these new inventions developed into products that can help improve healthcare. Even though not every invention that is submitted to Unimed will be successfully developed into a product, we want to recognize and highlight the importance of all of these inventions, successful or not. Because without this innovative thinking, there would be no patents or technologies to license. It could one day become products that help improve people's lives. We look forward to working with you to see your inventions successfully developed into products in the years to come. And we encourage all of you to continue your innovative thinking. Thank you for all of your hard work. New invention is the first step toward the development of a potential product. In order to protect these ideas and generate valuable assets that are needed to attract a commercial partner, Unimed often pursues patent protection in the United States as well as internationally. The patent process can take many years and requires a significant investment of time and effort on, on the behalf of the inventors. Therefore, today we'd like to acknowledge the effort made by our inventors that have resulted in U.S. patents being issued on their inventions. All inventors whose names are read today will receive a commemorative plaque with details about their patent. So to start off, we'd like to recognize a group of five related patents. Um, those patents are titled Robotic Devices with Compact Joint Design and Additional Degree of Freedom and Related Systems and Methods. Methods, systems, and devices relating to force control surgical systems. Multifunctional operational component for robotic devices, single arm robotic device with compact joint design and related systems and methods, and robotic surgical devices, systems and related methods. And for these patents, we'd like to recognize Dr. Shane Farader, professor in the College of Engineering at UNL, who's an inventor on all five of these patents, and Dr. Eric Mark Vicka, who's an assistant professor in the College of Engineering, <clears throat> who's an inventor on one of these patents. These patents cover various functional components of a robotic-based surgical system, this technology has been licensed to Virtual Incision, which is one of the more successful startup companies that has come out of the University of Nebraska. Virtual Incision recently raised $46 million in a Series C funding round to continue the development of their surgical system. Our next issued patent is titled Antimicrobial Peptides and Methods of Use Thereof. For this, we'd like to recognize Dr. Gus Wong. Dr. Wong is an associate professor in the Department of Pathology and Microbiology. This patent covers antimicrobial peptides that were designed using Dr. Wong's antimicrobial peptide database. These peptides can be used for the treatment of bacterial infections caused by escape pathogens. 
Next, PENTS is Methods for Administration and Methods for Treating Cardiovascular Diseases with Resiniferitoxin. For this patent, we'd like to recognize Dr. Hanjun Wang, Associate Professor in the Department of Anesthesiology, and Dr. Irving Zucker, Professor in the Department of Cellular and Integrative Physiology. This patent covers methods of administration and use of a potent neurotoxin called resiniferitoxin to treat cardiovascular diseases. This has been licensed to a mid-sized biotech company and has generated significant sponsored research back to the university. Our next issue patent is titled Automated, Automated Retrievable Hemorrhage Control System. Uh, we'd like to recognize Dr. Jason McTaggart, Associate Professor in the Department of Surgery, and Dr. Alexi Kamensky, who's the chair of the Department of Biomechanics at UNO. This patent covers a novel Roboa catheter system for the treatment of severe bleeding due to damage to the aorta. The device consists of balloons that help block bleeding from the site of injury, as well as a shunt that allows blood to flow past the damaged area to downstream tissues. Next issued patent is titled Stent to Assist in Arterial Venous Fistula Formation. For this one, we'd like to recognize Dr. Marius Florescu. Dr. Florescu is a professor in the Department of Internal Medicine, and this patent covers a novel stent design used to create arterial venous fistulas that minimizes turbulent blood flow, allowing for better overall outcomes for patients. Next issue patent is fluid jet arterial surgical device. And again, we'd like to recognize Dr. Jason McTaggart and Dr. Alex Alexi Kamensky. This patent covers an intravascular cutting tool that uses a high pressure water jet to cut the tissue. In fiscal year 2021, this was licensed to a startup company called Vessel Wave Technologies for further development. Next issued patent is distal radius fracture plate. And we'd like to recognize Dr. Daniel Firestone, assistant professor in the department of orthopedics. This is a design patent and is one of the few design patents that we've had issued over the last few years. It covers the design of a one size fits all fracture plate system for the treatment of wrist fractures. The next issued patent is ring and tubular structures and methods of synthesis and use thereof. For this patent, we'd like to recognize Dr. Jingwei Ji, assistant professor in the Department of Surgery and Dr. Bernard Baxter, professor in the Department of Surgery. This patent covers implantable multi-layer nanofiber-based drug delivery systems for the localized delivery of therapeutics. Next patent is methods of treating biofilm infections comprising administering inhibitors of myeloid-derived suppressor cells. We'd like to recognize Dr. Tammy Killian, professor in the Department of Pathology and Microbiology. This patent covers the use of various drug classes to inhibit a host myeloid deprived suppressor cells to help treat biofilm infections. This patent is MIBG analogs in uses thereof. For this patent, we'd like to recognize Dr. Yanina Baranowska Kordalevitz, research professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences. This patent covers targeted radiopharmaceuticals for the treatment of neuroblastoma. And this was previously licensed to a startup company. Next patent is gene therapy for juvenile bat disease. And again, we'd like to recognize Dr. Tammy Killian for this patent. This patent covers a CLN3 based gene therapy for the treatment of rare and devastating pediatric neurodegenerative disorder known as juvenile bat disease. This has been licensed to a mid sized biotech company called Abion Therapeutics for further development. This issued patent is Devices and Methods for Detecting and Measuring Sympathetic Vasomotion. <clears throat> Inventors on this patent are Dr. Peter Pellegrino, Chief Resident in the Department of Anesthesiology, Dr. Alicia Schiller, Assistant Professor in the Department of Anesthesiology, and Dr. Irving Zucker, uh, Professor in the Department of Cellular and Integrative Physiology. This patent covers a system for measuring sympathetic vasomotion, which can be used in a variety of medical procedures, including renal denervation procedures. The researchers are currently studying this device as part of a sponsored research agreement with a major medical device company. This issue patent is creatine oral supplementation using creatine hydrochloride salt. And we'd like to recognize Dr. Jonathan Benestrom, professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences. 
This patent covers the nutraceutical known as creatine hydrochloride, which is commonly used by uh, bodybuilders and other, uh, uh, it's been licensed by Vireo Systems and is on the market for retail purchase and is available as a product known as concrete. issued patents is polyethylene glycol conjugated glucocorticoid prodrugs and compositions and methods thereof. We would like to recognize Dr. Dong Wang, professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences, and Dr. Zhenshin Jia, a research assistant professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences. This patent covers glucocorticoid-based prodrugs for the treatment of systemic lupus. This patent has been licensed to Shannon Pharmaceuticals, which is a local startup company. Shannon is working on finalizing preclinical studies for lead formulation, and hopefully we'll see this move into the clinic in the next few years. Next issued patent is controlled release peptide compositions and uses thereof. <clears throat> the inventor on this is Dr. Joseph Vitro, who's an associate professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences. This patent covers nanoparticles that are coated with C5A analogs, such as the uh, peptide known as EP67, and is used for the delivery of therapeutics and vaccines for the treatment of infectious diseases. This patent has been licensed by a local startup company called Promium, which was originally founded by uh, Dr. Sam Sanderson. The issued patent is puromyosins and the methods of using the same. For this patent, we'd like to recognize Dr. Rong Shi Lee, Professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Dr. Ken Bales, Associate Vice Chancellor for Basic Science Research, and Yan Lu, a research manager in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences. This patent covers puromyosin-based small molecules for the treatment of bacterial infections. Next issued patent is portable lacroscope system. And we'd like to recognize Dr. Shandrakanth Ari, Professor of Surgical Oncology and Global Health, Dr. Madhuri Ari, Professor in the Department of Anesthesiology, and Dr. Dennis Alexander, Professor in the College of Engineering. This issued patent covers a portable laparoscope system that can be used in a variety of settings, including areas with limited space and resources. This has been licensed to a St. Louis-based startup company called Global Laparoscopic Solutions. Up next is the patent titled Computational Simulation Platform for Planning of Interventional Procedures. We'd like to recognize Dr. Ionis Hatsitsits, Professor in the Department of Internal Medicine. This patent covers a computer-based system for simulating and planning interventional procedures such as stent placements. This has been licensed by Dr. Hatsitsits for further development. issued patents is triazole bisphosphonate geranial geranial diphosphate synthase inhibitors. This patent, we'd like to recognize Dr. Sarah Holstein, Associate Professor in the Department of Internal Medicine. This patent is co-owned with the uh, University of Iowa um, and covers a small molecule inhibitor known, of an enzyme known as geranial geranial diphosphate synthase. This enzyme is critical for the regulation of Rab proteins. The lead compounds are currently being investigated in animal models of pancreatic cancer and multiple myeloma. This issued patent is nanofiber structures and methods of synthesis, synthesis, uh, excuse me, synthesis and uses thereof. <clears throat> We'd like to recognize Dr. Jing Wei Ji, Assistant Professor in the Department of Surgery, and Dr. Jian Jian, who's currently a histotechnologist at Nebraska Medicine. This patent covers gas foaming techniques used to expand two-dimensional nanofiber membranes into highly porous three-dimensional nanofiber membranes. This technology has been licensed by a company for use in developing hemostatic bandages, and it has also been optioned to another company for development of nanofiber-based surgical graft materials. Our last patent of the awards is titled Healthcare Provider Interface, for treatment option and authorization. We'd like to recognize Dr. Steven Salzbrenner, who's an assistant professor in the Department of Psychiatry. This patented technology covers a software system that helps identify treatment options for patients and automates key components of the prior authorization process. This technology was licensed to Dr. Salzbrenner's startup, startup BreezeMed, uh, which won the Startup of the Year Award last year. Intellectual property rights that we secure are valuable assets commercial partners need in order to develop products and services. Unimed transfers the rights in these intellectual properties to commercial partners using license agreements. 
As part of these license agreements, the university will receive a share of revenue that is generated by the commercial partner. Funds received by the university from these license agreements can be used to help fund new research that can lead to additional new and valuable discoveries, helping to create a cycle of innovation. As with patents, it can take a number of years and a lot of work on behalf of the inventors to see a technology become licensed. So we'd like to honor those individuals that have had their technology licensed during fiscal year 2021. Inventors of these technologies will receive a commemorative award highlighting their licensed technology. Our first licensed technology award is for the external tool tracking system. And we'd like to recognize Dr. Hani Heider, professor in the Department of Orthopedic Surgery. This technology is a computer-aided system which uses external tracking devices to help navigate cutting and drilling during an orthopedic surgery. This technology was licensed to a large medical device company in China for development and sale in the Asian market. This licensed technology is osteotropic thermoresponsive injectable hydrogels. We'd like to recognize Dr. Dong Wang, professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences, and Dr. Rango Ren, postdoctoral research associate in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences. This technology is a poloxamer-based hydrogel that is modified to bind to the surface of bone and teeth for the localized delivery of therapeutics. This technology was licensed to a biotech company based in China. This licensed technology is for the nasal pharyngeal swabbing trainer. Uh, we'd like to recognize uh, Benjamin Stobie, Assistant Vice Chancellor for Clinical Simulation in IXL, Dr. Christy Barnes, Assistant Professor in the Department of Otolaryngology, Dr. Jamie Dowdle, Assistant Professor in the Department of Otolaryngology, and Dr. Samuel Pate, Assistant Professor in the Department of Otolaryngology. This technology is a training system containing a half-based viewing window for training proper technique for naso and oral pharyngeal swabbing. This technology was non-exclusively licensed to the Chamberlain Group and is available for sale as a product that is called the OnPace Training System. Licensed Technology Award is for localized injection of therapeutics and cardiopulmonary diseases. We'd like to recognize Dr. Han Jun Wang, Associate Professor, Department of Anesthesiology, Dr. Dong Wang, Professor, Pharmaceutical Sciences, Dr. Stephen Lisko, Chair of the Department of Anesthesiology, Dr. Michael Langhorst, Assistant Professor in the Department of Anesthesiology, Dr. Irving Zucker, Professor in the Department of Cellular and Integrative Physiology, Dr. Thomas Nichols. I was previously in the Department of Anesthesiology and Dr. Lee Gao, an assistant professor in the Department of Cellular and Integrative Physiology. This technology is a method of using and locally administering certain classes of drugs for the treatment of cardi cardiopulmonary diseases. This technology was exclusively licensed to a new startup company called Inflinergo. This licensed technology award is for the technology titled COPD Detection Platform. We'd like to recognize Dr. Nicholas Sturgio, Assistant Dean and Director of Biomechanics at UNO, Dr. Stephen Renard, Professor in the Department of Internal Medicine, and Dr. Amal Patil, Associate Professor in the Department of Internal Medicine. This technology is a wearable detection system that measures the relationship between rhythms of a COPD's patient's pulse rate and their breathing and walking patterns to help determine the likelihood of a potential exacerbation. This technology was exclusively licensed to an Israeli startup company called Respire AI. As Michael mentioned earlier, Respire AI recently secured seed round funding close to $1 million to help further advance this technology. Next licensed technology award is for the technology titled Bromelane for the treatment of COVID-19. <clears throat> We'd like to recognize Dr. Prakash Radhakrishnan, Associate Professor at the Epley Institute, and Dr. Satish Sager, uh, who's a research instructor in the Epley Institute. This techn technology covers the use of an enzyme isolated from pineapples, which is known as bromelain, for the treatment of COVID-19. This is exclusively licensed to Dr. Radha Krishnan's startup company, Bromecare Therapeutics. Next licensed technology award is for uh, two different technologies and is titled Novel Aortic Stent Graft in the Aquaboid. We'd like to recognize Dr. Jason McTaggart, Associate Professor in the Department of Surgery, Dr. Alexi Kamensky, Chair of the Department of Biomechanics, Dr. Kaspar Osmolekis, Assistant Professor in the Department of Biomechanics, and Dr. Anastasia Desitova, who's an Assistant Professor in the Department of Biomechanics. 
As I mentioned, uh, there were two separate technologies licensed to one startup company. The first technology is a novel aortic stent graft that is designed to have similar mechanical properties as that of a healthy aorta, which is unlike traditional stent grafts that are purely rigid. The second technology is a unique intravascular cutting device that uses high pressure water jet to cut tissues and is currently being investigated for the treatment of aortic dissections. These technologies were exclusively licensed to a startup company called Vessel Wave Technologies. Next, the license technology award is for the OneCheck app. We'd like to recognize Dr. Jeffrey Gold, Chancellor of UNMC, Dr. Rodney Markin, Director of Unitech, Dr. Michael Wadman, Chair in the Department of Emergency Medicine, Dr. Wesley Zager, Executive Vice Chair, Department of Emergency Medicine, Dr. Thang Nguyen, Assistant Professor in the Department of Emergency Medicine, Harnoor Singh, who's the Director of Student Development at the Walter Scott Jr. Scholarship Program, Keegan Brown, who's a Scott Scholar at UNO, Carly Cameron, a Scott Scholar at UNO, and Grayson Stanton, who is also a Scott Scholar at UNO. This is an app that was designed to serve as a pre preliminary screening tool for COVID-19 and was deployed and extensively used at UNMC. This technology was exclusively licensed to a company called Civilians. Civilians excuse me. In addition to using this app for COVID-19, the company plans to expand the app's use for other infections, such as seasonal flu. Next, the license technology award is for the technology called the Portable Isolation Room. We'd like to recognize Dr. Mara Yana Broadhurst, Assistant Professor in the Department of Pathology and Microbiology. Dr. James Lawler, Associate Professor in the Department of Internal Medicine, and Dr. Christopher Cradiville, Associate Vice Chancellor for Clinical Research, and Dr. David Brett Major, Professor in College of Public Health. This technology is a rapidly deployable biosecure emergency care unit for outbreaks of highly infectious diseases. This technology was exclusively licensed by the startup company CareCubes. Our next licensed technology award is again for two or a combination of multiple technologies and is titled Long Acting Therapeutics and Gene Editing Techn Technology for HIV. For this technology, we'd like to recognize Dr. Howard Gendelman, Chair in the Department of Experimental Neuroscience, Dr. Benson Dagwa, Associate Professor in the Department of Pharmacology and Experimental Neuroscience, Dr. Jonathan Herskovitz, uh, MD PhD student here at UNMC. Mahmoud Hassan, a graduate research assistant in the Department of Pharmacology and Experimental Neuroscience. Dr. Bivesh Kavadia, assistant professor in the Department of Pharmacology and Exper Experimental Neuroscience. And Milan Kumar Patel, a graduate research assistant also in the Department of Pharmacology and Experimental Neuroscience. This award is for multiple technologies that were again licensed to one startup company. These technologies include numerous prodrugs and long-acting formulations for the treatment of HIV, as well as CRISPR-based strategies for treating and potentially curing HIV. These were licensed to a startup company called Exavir Therapeutics that was founded by Dr. Gendelman and Benson and Dr. Benson Adagua. Exavir has recently received issued patents on some of their lead long-acting formulations for HIV and are currently working on raising initial investment to move these into the clinic. License Technology Award is for the technology titled Child Care Quality Assessment Tool. And we'd like to recognize Dr. Abby Rakes, Associate Professor in the College of Public Health. This technology is an app that combines self-assessments and observation assessments to provide an objective measure of the quality of child care. This technology was exclusively licensed to a startup company called ECD Measures for the development. Uh, licensed technology is for the technology titled Computational Planning of Coronary Artery Bypass Grafting. And we'd like to recognize Dr. Ionis Hatsitsits, Professor in the Department of Internal Medicine, and Dr. Muhammad Ali Sharizihi, Postdoctoral Research Fellow in the Department of Internal Medicine. This technology is a software system that develops uh, helps develop a computational model to reliably predict intracoronary hemodynamics before and after coronary artery bypass grafting procedures. This technology was licensed to Dr. Hatsitsits for further development. Our final licensed technology award is for treatment of multi-organ failure. We'd like to recognize Dr. Henjin Wong, Associate Professor, Department of Anesthesiology, and Dr. Irving Zucker, Professor in the Department of Cellular and Integrative Physiology. This technology is a method of use in administration of specific therapeutics for the treatment of multi-organ failure, such as what is seen with acute respiratory distress syndrome. 
This was licensed to a mid-sized biotech company who has been sponsoring research in Dr. Wong and Dr. Zucker's labs to further explore this technology. So this brings us to the special award portion of our program. In past years, Unimed has recognized a small number of individuals with special awards for their innovative work. This show will continue that tradition by awarding three special awards, Startup of the Year Award, the Most Promising New Invention Award, and the Innovator of the Year Award. Our first special award is the Startup of the Year Award, which honors one of our more promising startup companies for their outstanding efforts to commercialize university technology. This year's Startup of the Year Award goes to Dr. Dong Wong and his startup company, Ensign Pharmaceutical. Dr. Wong is a professor in the Department of Pharmaceutical Sciences. He helped found Ensign Pharmaceutical to commercialize a platform drug delivery technology called Progel that was developed in this laboratory. The Progel technology can be used to locally deliver a variety of drugs. Ensign is currently exploring the use of the Progel technology for the delivery of dexamethasone for the treatment of arthritis. Ensign has secured close to $2 million in SBIR funding to further develop the Progel technology. In addition, in 2020, Ensign won the Business Innovation Life Pitch at the Orthopedic Research Society's annual meeting, and in 2021 was selected to present at two highly uh, selective startup conferences, Invest Midwest, Venture Capital Forum, and Destination Startup. Uh, congratulations to Dr. Wong and Ensign Pharmaceutical. Next special award is the most promising new invention award. Each year, Unimed selects one invention as the most promising new invention. This is an invention that the Unimed team believes has a strong potential to find commercial success. This year's most promising new invention award goes to Dr. Brian Narr, Mr. Travis Vanderhayden, and Mr. Russell Buffum for their invention of the improved self-pacing treadmill. Dr. Narr is an associate professor in the Department of Biomechanics, and Mr. Vanderhayden and Mr. Buffum are research development engineers in the Department of Biomechanics. The inventors have developed a treadmill system that adjusts to the user's pace without needing any additional input. You can speed up or slow down to match a runner's speed, making workouts safer and more realistic. This technology was recently licensed to a local startup company called Empower Health. We look forward to seeing this uh, invention further developed and hopefully uh, see it on the marketplace within a few years. So congratulations to Dr. Nar, Mr. Vanderhaden, and Mr. Buffum. The final special award is the Innovator of the Year Award. This award is given to individuals who have demonstrated a passion for innovation and translational research. This year's Innovator of the Year Award goes to Dr. Hanjun Wang. Dr. Wang's research focuses on the role that spinal afferent neurons play in regulating disease onset progression. Over the last few years, he has identified a number of therapeutic approaches to target spinal afferent neurons for the possible treatment of diseases, including heart failure, acute respiratory distress syndrome, hypertension, and peripheral artery disease. As one example, Dr. Wong is exploring the use of a potent neurotoxin known as resenoferotoxin to ablate specific neurons to help treat various disease states, such as heart failure. Dr. Wong's work has attracted the interest of a mid-sized biotech company that has licensed a couple of his therapeutic approaches related to the use of resenoferotoxin and have also sponsored over a million dollars worth of research at UNMC to further explore these approaches. In addition, a startup company has also been created called Influenergo to uh, help develop another one of its therapeutic approaches. And we hope to see this company move forward in the next year or so. In total, Dr. Wong has submitted 13 inventions to Unimed, which has resulted in 21 active patents and patent applications and three license agreements. With Dr. Wong's passion and creative research approaches, we are very excited to see what he develops in the future. Congratulations, Dr. Wong. Thanks, uh, Matt. And first, I would like to thank Unimed to select me as the uh, 2021st innovator. This is a great honor to me and my research team. When I started my academic career as a junior trainee, my goal was just to discover the novel scientific finding and got them published. Uh, but when I become more senior, I realized many of these novel findings could be translation, translated into real clinic therapies. Uh, 
For example, we spent a decade to study the mechanism, how the cardiac sensor nerve system protected the heart uh, in a healthy condition and how it become harmful to the injured heart after myocardial infarction. Then one day we suddenly realized that if this cardiac nerve plays a critical role in accelerating cardiac dysfunction post the myocardial infarction, ablation of those nerve could become a new potentially clinic therapy. So we find a, a selected chemical ablation reagent that called resinopher toxin RTX. Uh, we use this RTX to ablate in the nerve and with the help from Unimed, we file our first patent and later get licensed by the industry. This is my very first experience, how we uh, can translate our research work into a clinic therapy um, followed by this good experience. We continue to develop several RTX use patterns in other disease, uh, including hypertension, peripheral arterial disease, and acute lung injury. In addition to RTX, we are now targeting at the peripheral nerve system and to develop multiple neuromo neuromodulation therapy to treat cardiovascular pain and the pulmonary disease. I hope that my personal experience could be useful for my university colleagues to develop their own invention in the future. Um, finally, I want to share this honor with a lot of people be, uh, who stand behind me. First, I would like to thank Dr. Irvin Zucker. He's my previous mentor and now still my collaborator. We have been working together for many years. We co-developed all these RTX patterns and Dr. Zook's mentorship and support is critical for my career. I also want to thank uh, Dr. Stephen Lisko. Dr. Lisko is my department chair. He and I working together uh, for many cardiopulmonary projects. And Dr. Lisko's clinic experience and the mentorship are very critical for me to develop this translation project. And I also want to thank, <coughs> excuse me, I also want to thank um, uh, Matt, Matt Bone at the Uni Unimed. Matt is the behind person for every pattern that I, we are working and developing. So I think in the future, we'll work with Matt a lot, continually for the new invention. And finally, I really want to thank uh, my research team and my lab, um, Nikolai, and he's an engineer uh, without, a, without Nikolai's expertise and our lab will probably be paralyzed. <laughs> so I also want to thank my graduate student, Oliver and, and uh, Kaja. So they are working hard and contribute this new invention every day. Um, finally, thanks everybody to, uh, to come to attend this event. It's my great honor to uh, receive this award again. And I hope my uh, personal success can be shared by my colleague and encourage more people to um, join this invention uh, initiated by our Unimed. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Hey, thank you, Han Jun. Um, and congratulations to all of our inventors. On behalf of everyone at Unimed, I'd like to thank you for taking time out of your busy day to participate in this year's Innovation Awards. As mentioned earlier by Michael, we have set up a few breakout rooms where if you're interested, you can meet with some of our licensing team. Uh, there will be specific rooms for myself, Tyler, and Lisa, and AJ will stay on this main Zoom as well. So feel free to drop in and say hi or ask questions if, if you're interested or want to. Um, again, thank you for your time.